Well, good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm Julie Robinson and I'm the founder of Move It or Lose It and this all began in 2010 when after a couple of years of teaching exercise to older people I realised that there was a real need to help people do more exercise, be more active so they can be independent and healthy and happy. We have now got a team of train the trainers uh, because when I first began it was just me and you can't do it all. Last one, so if you've got anything left in the tank. We really started in the West Midlands and a lot of people travelled to us to do the courses and bit by bit we've been trying to take that out right across the UK to make it easy for more people to come and do the training. We had one instructor come to us called Diz who's here on the south coast and she's been up and down to Birmingham several times but we recognise there'd be a real need to come to the South West. Well, we're going to start with heel raises today. Having the funding through Unlimited for Transform Ageing it's allowed us to come to a new area where it's more rural, it's going to be more challenging and just prove that we can try and get more people moving here as well. She's not ready! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila! <laughs> well, I used to be a teacher in Devon for 25 years. I reached 50, so I thought I've got to have a, have a new start, do something different. The job satisfaction is fantastic. You really feel you're helping people because although we're sitting doing the exercises, nine times out of ten it becomes more of a, a social gathering. <laughs> so get those muscles working. Those of us who get together here all look after each other. And as far as we're concerned, that is what a community is about. We might not meet each other otherwise. We might just say a quick good morning and that's it. When was your birthday? Yeah. Oh, oh, happy birthday. We are older and she seems to understand that and looks after us. It's nice to be cared for like that. We realise that an instructor needs to be very good at what they do technically, they need to be safe, they need to be effective. But what we also want to focus on is getting those instructors to be the right kind of person. Because when you're working with older adults who may have lots of barriers as to why they shouldn't or couldn't exercise, we want them to help them overcome those barriers by making the class warm and welcoming, where they can feel they're all included, whatever their age, whatever their ability, there's something that they can do. Three, four, five, you're right with that one, Jerry. Yeah, fine. Yeah, watch your hand. I've travelled down from Birmingham today to come and meet other people who, like me, just want to change the way we help people to age. One of the things that um, I think all of this is about is how we create the conditions in which we prevent crises occurring in the first place. That trip or fall, that loss of function that precipitates uh, an emergency admission in the hospital. We're recognising that in 10 minutes we don't have the um, time to deal with a lot of the things that are underlying people's uh, medical problems. It's really linking people up with what's already there or what's developing in the community to find those solutions. Our plan for Transform Ageing is to train 20 specialist instructors. So we really need your help, obviously. The first thing is the call to get people to be recruited onto the training programme. It's quite challenging when you're coming to a new area. And what we really need to do is link up with other community partners, organisations, uh, talking to the people who can actually help us to spread the word. <laughs> When I was developing this idea and realised that it was starting to scale and we were gathering momentum, um, I had some conflict about making it a profitable business because it felt like I was making money out of older people coming to classes. And it took quite a lot of work with a mentor, in fact, to open my eyes to the fact that actually you can do an awful lot more good if you can get enough money behind you. Okay. You do have to make it a viable business and then you get all those communities to be self-sustainable and empower them to live better lives. And that in itself is, I think, what being a social entrepreneur is all about. Welcome everybody, nice to meet you all. What we're going to be doing today 
is getting to know each other and then we're going to go through all of the exercises that you've already been looking at through your e-learning. My name's Chris, I come from Torquay. Uh, my mother lives in Portsmouth, she has Alzheimer's and I'm very aware that she's actually got better or stabilised over the last two years by doing exercise. Um, I've come up from Camborne today in Cornwall. I'm a pharmacist. We're constantly promoting healthy eating, yeah. um, regular exercise. Yeah. So we could incorporate this into a medicines use review because it's endorsed, I believe, by the NHS. Mm -hmm. All of us are going to become social prescribers in an informal way. And many, many GP surgeries now are looking at people who are connectors because every doctor has to identify frailty. The millions that are in the mild to moderate frailty are at risk of a fall and the prescription is strength and balance classes. Hello. Okay. Now we can add in arm day. I love the look on your face. <laughs> I used to do care in the community and one thing I do realise from going out to people in their own homes is a lot of the little places haven't got anything. So they sit in their own homes and they've got nowhere to go. You lift your shoulders nice and slowly up to your ears. This is going to help with getting things from the top shelf and for getting dressed. We found in the Midlands that by getting a group of instructors together and training them and then supporting them, you get a hub. And what we hope in the South West is that we'll find someone that shines that could be their regional manager so that there's local support for them as well. Fantastic. As a paramedic we used to regularly go out to people that had had falls. If they were to be able to do this type of thing then hopefully that would prevent the falls. My husband's a GP and I've sort of chatted to him about doing this within the surgery and I've got lots of friends that are GPs in the area. Have you got any questions? What's been really good for me today is actually talking to the people from all across the South West and hearing what they aim to do and also some of the problems that they might face, uh, such as transport issues, which we know can be quite a big factor to get older people to the classes. They've already made contacts with other local organisations who are going to help them get older people to come to their classes. Very well done, thank you very much. It's really hard work running a business, a small business, where there's so many aspects to it. You're trying to juggle an awful lot of, of balls in the air all at the same time. The mindset is absolutely key and that then filters through uh, the culture of the whole of your business to really um, actually say things as boldly as I'd like to change the way we age, I'd like to save the NHS and actually believe that I could do it. <laughs>